1. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Zenfolio Live. I am Robert with Zenfolio Customer Success. I want to say thanks for joining us on the live stream today. Hey, if this is your first time hanging out with us, make sure you say hi to us in the chat. Let us know where you're from, whether you're watching on YouTube or Zoom. Make sure you say hi and let us know where you're from. Today, we're going to be talking about referral marketing for your photography business with Jamie Stewart. We're going to be talking about things like referral marketing, how to network on purpose, Lots of good stuff. And as we go through this, if you guys have questions for me or for Jamie, make sure that you get those in the chat. We're going to be answering your questions live today as well. <clears throat> I drink a lot of tea and I'm still like congested. Sorry, you guys. Um, all right. Well, let's see. In the way of announcements, and actually first, before we get into announcements, hanging out with me today, taking care of you guys in chat. I've got Richard. So make sure that you guys show them some love. He does a wonderful job hanging out with me. Taking care of you guys to be taking your questions, passing them along to me and Jamie. We're going to be getting those answered for you guys live. In the way of announcements, this is the last Zenfolio Live of 2020. We're going to be back January 7th, 2021. So we're going to take a little break and we'll be back next year with some really great stuff. The next Wide Angle Wednesday is going to be on January 6th, 2021. Uh, the topic is going to be posing and lighting tips for natural light portraits. If you guys haven't hung out with us yet on a Wide Angle Wednesday, they are a lot of fun. We have a panel of photographers come on there. We ask them questions. Everybody gets a chance to answer. Really good information, lots of good quick tips and just really helpful stuff. Uh, and lastly, in the way of announcements, we are again, encouraging you to share your favorite. Now I'm gonna say winter photos. Even though I know technically we're not into winter yet, I think it's the 21st. I think it's close enough to say, share your favorite winter photos with us uh, and use that hashtag Zenfolio photographers for your images to be featured on our social media platforms or on the intro of Zenfolio Live. Uh, and that's pretty much it for announcements. Let me shout out some of you guys who are joining us <clears throat> in a second. <clears throat> let's get that all cleared up and maybe I can talk okay. Uh, let's see, Bill, Doug, Gary, Lynn, 
Martin Hobby is hanging out with us. So, hey, Martin Hobby, yeah, if you guys missed the interview we did with Martin Hobby, it was pretty amazing. Uh, make sure that you go check that out. That video is on our YouTube channel. Really glad to have Martin Hobby back hanging out with us. Michelle from Redlands, California. Gary West. Uh, who else we have? Doug on here as well. Lots of guys hanging out with us on Zoom. Home Phone and Michael over on YouTube. Thank you guys for jumping on and hanging out with us. All right, you guys. Well, let me introduce our guest. He's a longtime business leader that is heavily involved in building communities, providing support to business owners, helping them find the right type of clients that they want and need to work with, and helping them to push themselves to achieve their business goals. So please help me in welcoming Jamie Stewart to Zenfolio Live. Hi, Robert. All right. Hey, Jamie, thanks for taking the time out of your day to hang out with me today. I really appreciate you jumping on here. You're welcome. How's your day going so far? It's the end of the day for me. So it's 7 p.m. in the evening over here in the UK. Um, just wrap it up. It just uh, been out and walked the dogs, uh, all the kids are out. So it's nice and quiet and peaceful. Nice. That's a nice way to kind of end your day for sure. So I kind of talked a little bit about it, but can you just tell us a little bit more about yourself, what you do, how you got into business coaching? Okay. So, so my, my background, I've always been that person that likes to know what everybody does. So wherever I've worked in an organization, I've known what people have done in different departments and kind of joined the dots. And now I feel like I do that for a living um, by helping people join their own dots, so to speak. Um, I, I left the corporate world seven years ago and started a social media and video agency. We got into video when Facebook first introduced direct uploads rather than having to post onto YouTube. And um, that led me to join in a breakfast networking group. Through that, I was introduced. So my, so my first year in that group, I had about 20,000 pounds worth of business by referral. Like a typical man, I didn't think that I needed to be taught anything or read up on anything. I just went and did it like we, like we generally do. Uh, and then one of the guys that owned the franchise, because it was a franchise, introduced me to Ascentive. And I just lost a big client at the time. It was worth about £30,000. And I'd been working on it for a bit. And then it all fell through. So I hadn't been doing any business development activity and needed to fill a big hole. And... Um, I met up with him at a training event for, for something else. And he said, why don't you take a look at this? You know, I help people get better business and better clients. And I said, what is a better client? He said, well, you know, nice people that pay you what you want and pay you on time. And that was exactly what I needed. I had a few clients at the time that were those awkward people that screwed you down on price, that queried everything that you did. And it was never enough or fast enough. So um, I sat at the training course and grew my business by 58% in, in three months. I, I know it was 58% because I'd done it for three months and I'd heard other people had these uh, great success stories out that won a big contract and I didn't feel that I had anything like that. So I thought, well, I know my sales are up. Let me just do some analysis. So it was the three months prior convert, compared to the three months after and it was up 58%. So, and then the following 12 months, so the networking group that I was in, so BNI, Breakfast Networking International, they they track, we, they encourage us to track all our results. So I knew that I had 20,000 pounds in the first year. It went to 88,000 pounds worth of business by referral in the second year. So it had a massive impact for me. Um, it helped me understand what a good client looked like. And it sounds really simple. It helped me think about what I really wanted to do. What does a good client look like? And then I taught some people to go and find me those introductions. And, I, and a typical client to me was worth about £5,000 a year. I won my first £45,000 client within a few months uh, that came as a referral. And, and that's what we teach people to do. It's, it's that simple, but we go into it in a lot of depth, like most things. Um, so then uh, we then got involved. We interviewed the guy who owns the UK franchise for Ascentive. He booked us to go to their conference. And, and it, when you get to sit in on somebody else's event, you see it from a different perspective. And, and I thought, these are all quite nice people. So, uh, the guy that taught me said, um, I think you'd be quite good at teaching this. And I said, yeah, I think I would too. So I did the training course and then, and that, that was two years ago. So I've spent the last two years sort of refining my craft and helping people like Martin to, to grow their business and find better business. 
I love that. I love that you bring up finding the right type of client. Cause I think that so for so many of us, when we first get into business, it's just about finding clients, right? It's about Without. just anybody. Right. And, and I, I think we kind of forget to stop and think like, am I really establishing who I want to work with? And I think it's such a huge part of the process, but a lot of people kind of, kind of put in the back door and don't really think about till maybe later on down the road. Um, so really quick, can you just kind of talk a little bit more in depth about that process that you kind of go through that? Like, how do you help people kind of identify who those people are um, okay, so, and get to so that? It's kind of a, a six step process that we take people through. So it starts with understanding what your reason why is. Um, so we call it emotionally charged connection. And when, when you, we've all got a little bit of a story about what we're doing, but there's, there's, we go a little bit deeper into that and help people find what's the real reason why they're doing what they're doing and what's their passion about it. And when we share that with the right people, not with every client, but with the right people, it makes them want to help us so that they're as part of our team, they're not on the payroll. So it's a free, a free sales force, if you like, but, but it's reciprocal. And then we teach them to help and find us the introductions that we want. So it starts with why then we help people with their vision and mission and the vision is not your corporate vision. It's how do you see your life and business in, in three to four years time? You know, how much time do you want to be working? What kind of people do you want to be around you? How do you celebrate your wins? What do your vacations look like? We call it holidays in the UK. Um, and so the life that you lead, most people forget about that. And again, that's something that when you share it with the right people, they're cheerleading you and supporting you. It's not to say, right, I want to be a millionaire in three years' time because that doesn't make people want to help you. But if if instead you were to say, I want to have the financial security for my family so that I can provide them with some of the things that I've missed out on or perhaps missed out on when I was younger, uh, I want to be there to take the kids to school and, and attend sports days because it's hard to do that when you've got a job. And people buy into that because we can all relate to it. We've all been in the corporate world where you miss out on so much and that we start our businesses quite often with a dream of how the life that we want to lead. And then we just get busy being busy. And, and like you said just before, you take on any kind of client because you need to pay the bills and then you just get stuck in a rut. So then um, once we've done that, we help people identify what does a dream client look like? That whilst you can deal with lots of different clients, if you were just to deal with your ideal client, what does that person, what do they look like? Is it a man or a woman? Are, are they young or old? Do they live near you or far away? What are the personality types? Uh, what industry are they in? And for some people, they might not be in a specific industry or sector, and some that might be really niche. Um, so we help them identify that. And once you've done that, then to look at look through their existing network and categorize their network. And most people don't do this. We've got, you know, if you look, if you, if you go into your iPhone, your, your iPhone, I've got an iPhone. So if you go into your iPhone and your contacts and just go right to the very bottom, it'll tell you how many contacts you've got in there. And, and most people have built up a collection of people that they've got in the phone that they haven't spoken to for years, that, that they've got on LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram, but they've never spent any time to, to think, right, actually, Robert's brilliant. He knows loads of photographers. I want to work with photographers. How can I build a relationship with him and then teach him how to introduce me? And, and we don't do that very often. So we might go networking and we'll do our pitch and we just expect somebody because they've heard our 60 second pitch to go and get us the dream introductions that we're looking for. Where if you think if we took a salesperson on and we would probably train them for three or four weeks and have regular training with them to go out and sell for our business. And yet we expect almost strangers to get us introductions because they heard our 60 second pitch at a networking event. So, so we say, take, let's say you took four or five hours over a few weeks to meet with somebody and teach each other about your businesses and, we, and build, build a good relationship with them so that I understand your business and how, what you're looking for and you understand mine. Teach you what an ideal client looks like. And then we go off and try and get those introductions for each other and, and collaborate on it. So it, it's building a small team of people who become really good friends as part of it because you open up with people and share. And there's, I've spoke to a few people about this recently because there's a lot of people starting up in business right now. Um, people that have jobs just don't understand what it's like running a business. And, you know, even, even our partners, you know, our wives and husbands, if they've got a job or if they've never actually run the business, 
they find it hard sometimes. So you need to be around people that that understand what it's like and and that pick you up when you can be feeling a bit down sometimes and spur you on. So it's building that small team of people that are on your side that get what why you're doing and what you're doing and know how to go out and help you. And that and that's what we do. So we do it. We we run it all online. So it used to be in person and we. We actually made the decision before, in, right in January, before COVID and everything kicked in, me and my business partner, Dawn, we decided that we were going to go virtual because she lives an hour and a half away from me. Um, so we run it over 10 weeks and it's a 90 minute session each week. And there's, uh, some might call it a bit of ass kicking in it, but accountability is what we prefer to call it. Um, so we start, we end each session with, right, before you come back next time, you need to have done this based on what we've covered today. And then we start the next session with, right, how did you get on? And for some people, it's, oh, no, I haven't done anything. And then, then when they listen to the other people that who, who pushed themselves a little bit and went off and did something, that's when they think, oh, maybe if I'd have actually pushed myself to make some time to do that, I could have had the wins like they've just had. So... Um, I, I get to use my, my favourite word here. They, they learn vicariously. So they learn from other people as well as what we teach them. So being in that small group really helps them understand, right, okay, so I didn't really think that that would work, but that guy over there went and did it. Maybe I'll do it next week. Um, I, I love that. There's so much in there to unpack, like so much information. Like it, you broke it down really nicely, but there's so much in there to unpack. But uh, really quickly, what so what are your your typical clients what do they look like for you the people that you specifically work with so for me if i was to describe my my ideal client they're generally aged between 35 and 55 um small to micro businesses and so generally less than 10 staff but more often they're not working on their own really driven people um ambitious sometimes they can be a little bit marmite i don't know if, if that's a phrase that you understand so some people, so Marmite's a thing that people either love it or hate it in this country. So, so they're the kind of people sometimes that people might like and they might not. And I get on great with those people because I'm quite thick skinned. So, um, more often than not, they're dog owners. I just seem to work with a lot of people that have got dogs. Uh, and if they don't have dogs, I just think that they're aspiring dog owners. That's the way that I categorize them. Um, they're generally people that, that are involved in some kind of personal development as well, whether that's reading or podcasts, and they're not happy with the status quo. Um, not necessarily money driven, but family people that want to provide for their families. So, so they're doing this for a reason, and it's not just for the financial reward of stuff, that there's a, a bit of a higher purpose for it. So that, that's what a typical client looks like for me. Doesn't always have to be in, in a particular industry sector. Um, I've worked with people in, in all sorts of roles and industries. Um, they've just got to be nice people, though. You know, we've between me and Dawn, we've got quite a good filter for filtering out people that aren't our kind of people. Um, and hopefully none of them are watching. But it's along the lines of it's just not, not the right time for you to do this right now, which is code for you're not our kind of person. Uh, because you know at the end of the day we run our own business on our terms so why should we take on some of those clients we've all done it we've all picked some people that they're not really our kind of people but we need the money at the time and as soon as we've taken the money we regret it afterwards so um yeah so we've got we've only had in in the whole of 2020 we've only had one person slip through the filter this year so we've done quite well that's, that's pretty good, but I can definitely relate. I've definitely taken on those clients that I was just like, man, like, why did I, I mean, I know why I said yes, but I, and I'm still kicking myself for saying yes. So yeah, it's definitely, definitely something that can relate. Now you said something earlier, but when we kind of first introduced yourself, you talked a little bit about breakfast marketing. I know for me, that was something that I was not hundred percent familiar with. Um, so can you kind of elaborate what exactly that part was and, and what it is? Okay. So, so when I left my corporate job back in 2013 I used to leave the house about six half six in the morning and get in half six seven at night so I missed out on a lot of time with the kids when they were younger so when I started my own business one of the things that I agreed with the family was I was going to do the school run each morning so that was a big thing for me um, 
there's there's a lot of breakfast networking events that go on that start at 6 30 a.m and finish at 8 30 and the idea being that you can go and do that it doesn't interrupt your business day you can leave at 8 30 and then go off and go to work and still do your normal day's work particularly if you're in trades like electricians and plumbers and builders who've got to be on site and the clients expect them to be there all day so i was in i think i spent four years uh, avoiding that and one of my clients pestered me for four weeks can you come along can you come along for four weeks eventually i said right okay so i went and i joined this and i joined bni that morning i loved it i had to just and i kicked myself for not doing it and and it's a structured format and there's, and there's loads of different networking out there so whether it's a chamber of commerce event or a certain industry group um bni is obviously a global organization that works really well and they're designed some of them sorry some of them are designed to help you win more business other them are, are less structured and just um when when we can meet and if we get to go back to meeting in person there is like a coffee and a social and maybe something to eat um you might call them net, networking mixes i think in the states as well um and so what we actually did this year because everything's gone virtual so me and my business partner launched our own business as well doing virtual networking so it's designed for virtual networking so we've taken a lot of this the content and the material that we teach and given people the platform to meet more of the right kind of people and, it, and it's conversational based so it's one of the one of the things that we encourage people to do is look you need to build your network even even if you've got the right network for you if you're going to want to receive referrals from other people you've got to be able to pass them so it's got to be a mutual relationship so some people will will need to expand their network in order to find opportunities for their referral partners. So you might need to be in one or two different types of networks to go and meet new people to then say, all right, okay, so you'd be a great introduction for my friend, Robert. Robert does this, this, and this. And then that's, that's the reason. So they might get nothing from it personally, but I need to be able to pass my referral team some business. And I think a lot of people forget that. Um, so so in, in, in our relationships, so me and Dawn are in, in business together. Um, she's the brutal one. So we had a client a few weeks ago. So Jamie's really nice and he's good at teaching it, but Dawn's brutal. He also said, Anne Brilliant. But I always forget that Anne Brilliant part and just introduce her as the brutal one in our relationship. So you'll, you'll hear some people, yeah, I've tried networking and I've been networking for a long time, but I just don't get anything. And I'll say, well, it may be that you haven't taught people right. Maybe they're not the right people to, to be dealing with your eyes of clients. Dawn then says, maybe they just don't like you. So it, it's different things for different people, um, but it's it's understanding. So you might be in a networking group, and and I was, you know, I left BNI because I hadn't had any referrals for for four months. I'd had a couple of hundred thousand pounds over the last few years from it, but virtu on, when it moved to virtual, it just didn't work for me. So that's why we've we've changed and tried something new ourselves. I think you. I think every relationship needs a brutal one. I mean, it gives you a benefit, especially when you're the nice one. Like it lets you play those those both sides when you can work together. Yeah, Many thoughts came to my mind, but I'll just I'll just keep those to myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, so I know when I had Martin on, one of the things that he kept talking about repeatedly over and over again was how he, you had taught him this referral marketing, how it just had a, made a huge impact on his business. And I know that when you and I were talking before, um, you guys kind of have a specific, I think it was an acronym that you use, CONNECT. Okay, you kind of yeah. break so that down. One of the things, when we meet new people, we generally... And, and I did it when we were talking the other day. Um, we generally just go through our CVs. So let's say we meet at a networking event or a, or a, or a mixer. Um, I might say, right, and I used to work in multi-level marketing and I ran this business that did that. And then I left, when I left that, I started this. And then I moved over here and I did this other thing. And I just talk about the job. Uh, and we always joke about accountants and, you know, if someone says they're an accountant or a CPA, then everybody just glazes over because it's, it's dull. You know, hopefully none of them are watching this call right now. Um, whereas a photographer sounds a bit more interesting, but if, if we can find out a bit about the people first. So when you first meet people, you get to know them on a personal level, then you buy into them. It also makes it easier to refer people as well. So if you find out about them, so let's say 
Um, I met someone the other day and he was telling me that he'd got two young kids, four and five, and they were into football and that next year he really wanted to get into camping with the family. So a friend of mine runs a camper van business. It's very easy for me to say to him, so Terry, um, let me introduce you to Joe. Joe runs a camper van business. Rather than rushing out and buying all your camping equipment, which is going to be expensive, why don't you just book a camper van for a couple of nights? You'll get on brilliantly with Joe because of this, this, and this. And it's only £77 a night to hire a camper van. So, so when we know a bit about the personal stuff about people, which we forget about in business generally, because we get up in the morning, we put our work clothes on, and we put our little mask on and turn into you know just successful people and we never share any of our vulnerabilities. Everything's brilliant. Business is great. Um, when, we, when we find out some of the personal stuff about people, it makes it easier to help them and easier to introduce them to other people. So... We, we've come up with this thing. It's called the connect method. So when you're first meeting somebody, or it might be at a second meeting and you're thinking, right, this person might be good for me to help me um, find some introductions to clients. Just say to them, let's take a couple of minutes and you might want to time it or say two to three minutes, but put a time limit on it. Otherwise, you never know if the other person's going to go off on a tangent and chat for half an hour all about their background. So to so time it just so that you don't spend too much time on it. So connect stands for the C is for childhood, the O is for our fi our family, the N is for what do you do when you're not working, the next N is new places that you'd like to go to, the E is eventful times in your life, the C is for causes that I care about, and the T is for things that you might not know about me. There should be enough in there that if you start working through that list and it starts off with my childhood. So you're, you're working on a bit of a timeline from when I was young, then when I grew up, then my family, places that I'd like to go. And you tell people stuff that we would never normally tell them in a business context. But then you find out, and I did this the other day, so I used to be uh, really into scuba diving and, and diving on shipwrecks. And I did it in a group and then it went around the room. Three or four other people had been scuba diving in the past at various levels, one of their sons. We would never normally say that, particularly in winter, in lockdown. You would never bring that up in conversation. And then when you've got that mutual interest with somebody, you feel like, right, they're my kind of person. I like them. And we all just relax a little bit because we've got something in common rather than them being complete strangers. And it can be an easy way to introduce people as well. So, so that's just a, a useful tool to use if you're out meeting new people um, in the first first couple of meetings. And it may be that you find, actually, they're not my kind of person. So, so rather than wasting too much time with someone who's not your person and deal with that straight away, okay, it's been great meeting you. Um, let's keep in touch. But really, you're not going to keep in touch. Um, so you've, you've got to filter people in some way. I love that you have the acronym for that because I think that's one of the things is that, you know, I, to be honest, I haven't done a lot of networking events and now talking to you about it, it sounds like something that I would love to do. And one of the biggest things is like, okay, well, we're going to go there. What are we going to talk about? What are we going to do? Is it just going to be a bunch of boring, like, hi, I'm a photographer. Oh, I'm an accountant. So like, I love that you've got to give us this acronym and this steps and this process, but then you really break it down and talk about how to actually make it meaningful and to use this as a way to, to meet people that can not only help your business, but that you're actually going to like. And, that, and I think that's so important to develop those relationships and then use that network to then bring benefit to your business. I think it's a great thing. <laughs> There's people I've met and the first time I've met them, I, I, am, I go on my gut feel a lot. And the first time I've met some people, I probably think they're not my kind of person. It's not, not that I don't dislike them. I just don't take a sudden warmth to them. If I meet them and go through this with them and I find out actually they're just putting an act on when they're standing up doing their presentation, when they sit down and relax and I get to know them, they're my kind of person. So it's a useful way to, to scratch the surface, if you like, and find out what the real person's like. And for me, generally, you know, family people and dog lovers uh, oh, and gin, Gin's a big thing. <laughs> You've got to be a gin lover generally as well. Nice. Now, for people listening who have maybe never done anything like this before, like what would you suggest? How? What is the best way for them to, to get started? Maybe if they're holding back because they're nervous or they just don't see a benefit, what would you say to people who are watching that and maybe have never given this kind of thing a try? So find, ask, ask the people that you know that are in business if they go to any networking events. And you probably want to find one that's a little bit more informal. 
and not standing up and pitching into a big room. So there's different types of networking events out there. So, so the one that we run, we, we don't have people pitch into the whole room. We put them into small breakout rooms on Zoom. So there's only ever three other people three other people in a room with them and we get them to go through this process so it's conversational rather than feeling like because because public speaking is people's biggest fear isn't it so why force people to do that so we put them into small groups where everyone feels comfortable so find a networking group that suits you do some research ask in the forums because there's a lot of forums around about this in different groups facebook groups and things like that and find something that works for you um do some prep beforehand the number of times that I've seen people come to a networking event and they don't know what they want. So if if you and I just met for the first time and I said to you, right, so great to meet you today, Robert. How can I help you? Uh, oh, I hadn't actually prepared for that. So think about what would be a good introduction for you, um, for, you know, for photographers. So when we did some work with Martin, Martin, and I met him through, through networking, he just relocated... Um, it doesn't sound a lot when we say it to you. It's almost embarrassing. 150 miles away. For us, that's a big distance. Uh, it's sort of three or four hour drive. So he just relocated. So all his business and his contacts and his network were at the bottom end of the country and he'd moved up to the cold north. And um, he had to start from scratch. So we we sat down and we talked about what would be a good kind of thing. And he really wanted to focus on headshots. Now, I pushed him a little bit because I had an office at the time. So... I said, right, use my office. There's no charge. Let's set it up and, and book you in for a day's worth of, of headshots. Now, it might be that you're looking for something like that. You're looking for a venue where you want to get some people in. And I think sometimes we need, we need to give a little bit. So you might want to give it a bit of a discount. And if you're going to, to it, so let's say that you, you go and join a network in a group as a photographer and you want to do headshots. You might want to let people have a taste of what it's like to work with you. So, so Martin, I should have prepared. Um, Martin um, has, has a few phrases. One of them is, to, to help people relax, what's your favourite dinosaur? And it's just an icebreak. And people have that reaction. They start smiling. They just relax. And, and that's what makes a difference. Now, he when he sat this programme with us, he, for the people that have passed him some introductions, he, he got some mugs made with what's your favourite dinosaur on and his business logo on the other side. So you need some talking points as well. But... Find the people. I think about the people who've got access to your ideal kind of client. So if you want to go and work and do events, who are the people that also supply into the events industry? It's a tough one right now. If you want to do corporate headshots and or product shots, who are the people? What kind of industries and roles are they in that supply into those people? So you want to meet the people who can introduce you to their customers. And likewise, when you build up your customer base, you can introduce those to yours. And we, we talk about those as referral sources. So it's people that you can collaborate with. And so let's let's say Martin's going to do headshots for people. They're generally going to go on a website. So a web developer will be a good referral partner for him. The, the client isn't going to go, right, I'm going to have new headshots, but I'm not going to put them on a website and I won't spend money with my web developer. It's not either or, they deal with both. Whereas, um, yeah, you don't, you don't want to deal with somebody where, so let's say a web developer and someone that does uh, SEO and Facebook advertising, the client might go, right, I'm going to spend my money on SEO, but I'm not going to spend it on Facebook ads this time. So, so they don't make good referral partners. It depends on the person. So, so be strategic in, in who you build alliances with. So it might be that you go to a networking event to meet somebody who's going to be great at introducing you. Or it might be you go to a networking event that's a room full of clients for you so that if you build the right relationships with them, you can sell to each one of those. We don't generally encourage people to go to networking to sell, but if you can build relationships with people so that they want to come buy from you, that's slightly different. I think that's great. I mean, there's so many good points in there. And guys, we see your questions. We're going to take a quick break here in a few minutes and come back and answer those questions. But um, I love that you just can, it's just consistently about building relationships that are mutually beneficial, right? Because if you go into it, just thinking like, well, what am I going to get out of this? And you're never really thinking about what you bring to the table for the other people. Eventually, if they are helping you out, they're going to lose interest in that, just like you would if you're helping somebody who is never really giving anything back. So I love that that's consistently what you bring up. And it's something that seems so common sense, 
but I think we all just don't think about it and, and overlook it and, and aren't really taught to focus on that. So I love it's, that you're bringing. Yeah, bringing that it's easy not to do. You know, there's no, <laughs> there's no there's no consequence if you don't do this stuff other than you don't get the business. Exactly. So it's easy to do. But it's easy not to do. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Jamie, you and I are going to take a quick break. We're going to let our moderator, Richard, jump on here. Uh, we'll come back and answer some questions here in just a few, but we'll go ahead and take a break and we'll be right back, you guys. All right. Hey, everybody. Happy Thursday. Uh, my name is Richard. I'm with the Zinfolio customer success team. And as always, we do appreciate having you all on. Um, if you haven't asked any questions yet, please feel free to drop them within the Q&A section of the Zoom. If you are within Zoom, if you're on YouTube, of course, you can drop them in that chat. And I am sending those to Jamie and Robert as y'all are putting them in. They'll definitely be addressed here shortly. Um, but hey, if you are watching the stream, um, a recorded version of it, because we always put our uh, Zenfolio live streams back on YouTube. If you're watching the recorded version of this, you also can ask questions as well. Um, on YouTube, of course, we do have uh, below in the description, we have a link titled email questions for next week. Um, feel free to drop your questions in there based on the topic that we'll have. And we're always happy to answer those as well. Um, but I really like too what uh, Jamie said about, uh, of course, building those relationships that are mutually beneficial, especially with photography. Um, you know, of course, who you are personally is just as important as you are professionally. Um, and we've had a lot of uh, questions uh, kind of relating back to that acronym. So we'll address that here shortly. Um, but that's awesome. That's a great piece of information. And uh, I really appreciate Jamie uh, being here with us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give that back to Robert so we can uh, address some of those questions and uh, Jamie can as well. All right. Thank you, Richard. Again, I appreciate you jumping on here on Thursdays. Great, great help. Awesome. All right. Well, um, we're going to go ahead and grab some of your guys' questions. As Richard said, we have plenty of time for questions, so make sure that you get them in the chat. Uh, Jamie, first question for you. This is from Doug. He says, I work full time and I don't want to open any floodgates. So how do you control if you get too many requests, if that happens? Too many requests for work or? I think for, I think for work, yeah. If they, so if they start doing referrals and they start getting in too much requests, I mean, I think that's a pretty easy, pretty. Uh, yeah, I think we're all fearful of that, that suddenly we get inundated with work, but I've yet to come across too many people that, that get too much work too quickly. Um, it may be that you, you prioritize people and that you just take a calendar basis on first come first served. Um, I come across a lot of people that, yeah, I'm going to do this. I just want to get my website ready first. And once I've done my website, then, then I'm going to get busy. There's a lot of work, uh, even in promoting events, where we're giving stuff away for free and inviting people along takes a lot of work to get people to come. When we start charging people, it's just that extra barrier. So, so unless you're going to be working for free, you, it's going to take a bit of time to build it up. Um, go to a networking event and try it and see what happens from that. You'll probably need to then have some meetings with some people. We call them one-to-ones or business. We prefer to call them business development meetings. So for those people that go networking, um, people throw around this phrase called one-to-ones. If you call it a business development meeting, it sets the intention for the meeting that we're going to talk about business and its work and it's not just a chat. So um, go, on, go and try an event. Um, you don't have to join. Most events will let you go and try one or, one, or two, one or two visits, see what you think of it. And if you find that it works and, and the, you know, you are worried that you're going to get too much work, just explain to people, you know, generally I'm booking people up for three or four weeks time or in, in a month or two. You know, if you look at, in, in this country, in the UK right now, a lot of the, the trades, the builders, the plumbers, the electricians and decorators, they're booked up now for months as a result of lockdown. So, so people will, if you're good at what you do, people will be prepared to wait. So don't be worried about saying to people, do you know what, I'm that good. I'm in such demand that there's a waiting list. No, absolutely. And I think kind of going back on some stuff too, that's where definitely utilizing that network and making sure that if the floodgates do open, you now have the capability of, choosing people who are your ideal client and then passing people along who might not be your ideal client to people in your networking community that you might have made acquaintance with. So now you're using that community not only to, to get you referrals, but then also to help you handle that floodgate, which is going to be mutually beneficial as well. 
I th and I think a lot of people think that somebody that does the same thing as me is a competitor. So Martin um, is watching this right now. I know that he's got some photographers who are referral partners with him so that when he's busy, so I know that Martin still does weddings, so that when he's got a wedding on, you know, the third Saturday in January, if somebody else comes to him with a wedding for that day, they're not going to change the date of the wedding because Martin's already booked. They, they've booked the day, they need a photographer for that day. So he has other people who he knows um, meet his kind of standards, so he won't just refer them to anybody. Um, he'll introduce them to them. And likewise, when those people are busy, they pass the introductions to him. So even if you are busy, if you've got someone that meets your criteria, um, then you can pass introductions to other people. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, this next question is from Lynn. Uh, he says, since these are referrals primarily, how long is your sales cycle? And then he also wants to know, what is your elevator pitch for a new prospect? Okay, so my elevator pitch, we call it a you know how phrase. For those people that are watching that have been, been visited a networking event, most people will say something like this. Hi, my name's Jamie. I'm from Ascensive and I help people with referrals. This week, I'm looking for an introduction to Robert from Zenfolio. So if anybody knows Robert, please can you pass me an introduction? And whilst it's on Zoom, because most networking is on Zoom right now, most people will be pretending to write stuff down and the head will just be bobbing along like that. And they all sound the same. So we say to people have a, a, a you know how phrase which alludes to what you do, particularly if, so if you're, if you're face to face with people, you want something that's a conversation starter, not a finisher. So if I just say, I'm an accountant, then people will not be interested in finding out more. If I say, so if I was an accountant and I said, you know how most people in business hate paying tax? Well, I help them pay less tax and do it legally and sleep easy at night. The obvious thing that someone's gonna say is, how do you do that? And it opens up the conversation and the dialogue. So you want a short phrase that starts with, you know how. So you know how business owners um, never have time to find new business, but it's their biggest fear. They lie awake at night worrying about where the next bit of business is coming from. Well, I help them sleep easy at night by putting a process in place. And so if I was at a networking event, I said, and I do that by running uh, a 10 week training program, I do it via Zoom in small groups. So you, you just need a simple phrase that sparks interest. Don't go into too much detail. Don't start listing things. Talk about one thing in it, ideally. So I help people with, and, and what's the one thing that you do? And we all glaze over when people start listing lists of things off. In terms of sales cycle, I think you asked me about the sales cycle. This is where, this is where we need to teach other people. So we have, we have this thing, a five-step process. So if you want to receive good referrals, let me backtrack. We've, most of us have received bad referrals. So what's a bad referral? It's someone that um, we, we get an introduction to somebody and, and, and I get a bit excited when someone passes me a referral because I think if they've done it right, this is, a, this is an order. It's going to turn into money straight away. So I get really excited. It's almost like the money's there in some of the palm of someone's hand waiting for me. Um, so I get, we get excited. We get in touch with the person. There might be some, depends on how it is. There's some email back and two. We set up a meeting, whether it's on Zoom or in person. We have that meeting because we've been referred to each other. So Robert, you're meeting me because Martin's introduced us. You feel an obligation to me because of your relationship to Martin. Martin obviously thinks there's a reason why we should be speaking. And I think the same. So we're both nodding away. I'm pitching to you. You're nodding and thinking, I can't afford this. I know that I mentioned to Martin that I'd love to do a training course, but I've already signed up to these other things. And so I'm just going to be really polite and, and say yes. And then it'll soon be over with. And I think the meeting's going brilliantly. And I go away and then I send you a proposal back and then, then you ghost me and I never hear from you. And we've both wasted time. So we've all experienced that in some way in the past. Um, you know, it might be that someone said, yeah, yeah, I'd love some new headshots or new photos from a website doesn't mean they've got the money for it so if someone follows these steps um we've got five steps the first one is trust i've got to have trust in the person that i'm going to refer so that means we've got to build trust first and it's the biggest step because for a lot of people it takes a bit of effort to build trust that might be uh, having a good reputation it might be people seeing your pictures and uh, photography or video whatever it is that your niche is 
Um, so they might have experienced it. They might have had pictures taken by you. So for me, I'm a, I'm a, my LinkedIn is a walking advert for Martin because he did my headshot, uh, and the same on Facebook. Um, so you might have, you might have used that person. So you've got trust. The second one is I need to have some knowledge about the other person's business. So I can't just say to you, you need to speak to Martin. He's a great guy. I need to know a little bit about what he does and why he's good at what he does in order to pique your interest. Otherwise, the conversation is just going to stop. I'm not just, I'm a busy person. I'm not just going to meet you because you say that this other person's a nice guy. So we've got to have trust, knowledge. Then we need to qualify it so that um, I can bring you up in conversation. So let, let's say I'm, I'm chatting with you about your headshot and um, start talking about people that maybe have bad uh, profile pictures on social media you know their wedding shot from 15 years ago where the, the the wife's hands cut out and it's cropped or it's a really bad selfie on a drunken night or something like that there's still people with those things out there so you can have a laugh about that i said you know what you know you you look great right now robert but your picture doesn't do you justice i know this brilliant uh, photographer why don't i introduce him you've seen me i look great on my profile picture that's how good he is he even made me look good do you think that that's something that might help you in business? Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. He doesn't do this for nothing. As much as he loves his work, it, he has to pay his mortgage. So he charges. And you, you, if, if the person that's referring you can have that money conversation and qualify it, so it's going to cost you $1,000 for you to have your headshots done. Do you think you can afford that? Yeah, yeah. I think I was looking at doing something like that. Okay. Then the next stage is to... Um, explain exactly how Martin works. So what he'll do, he'll come, he's COVID safe, he'll book a venue, he'll stay socially distant, he'll set up. And what Martin's really good at, he puts you at ease. Um, so there's none of that awkwardness because we've got all these bright lights on us. Um, and, and that's just what makes Martin different to everybody else. So you've got to know that other person that you're introducing really well, explain what they do so that when he comes and does the work, it's exactly what I've explained. So I've already talked about the price and checked that you could do that. I've already explained how he works. And the last bit is to set the appointment. So whilst I'm speaking to you, Martin's given me access to his diary. I know that and it might be a really good tool that we use is Calendly. I don't know if you've used that, you come across it. So it's free for most people for what they need. So you can put certain slots and days in your diary and give somebody that Calendly link so that they can just book a day and a time that suits you. Because that's the hard bit sometimes. While, while we're chatting, you're really engaged. Yeah, yeah, I want to do that. I want to use Martin. Then you go away and you go back to work and you get busy. And then you've got a phone number from someone whose number you don't recognize. And you might not use email. And then Martin thinks, well, Jamie did this introduction for me, but I just can't get in touch with Robert. So if I can do that whilst I'm with the person, at the point that you speak to Martin, you know what he does. You know why he does it. You've said that you've got the budget. You know what it's going to cost. So really, you're just meeting Martin to see if you actually like him or not. And you should do, because if I've introduced him right away, because I've connected with him, I've gone through the connecting process, I, I explain what you might have in common. It's they convert at a much higher rate. So you don't need as many leads. You don't need to do as many proposals or quotes to people because the, the introductions that you're getting are to your right kind of clients that you want. And because somebody else has done the most of the selling work for you, then they convert at a much higher rate. Love it. I think that's, that's great. That's fantastic. And, and thank you for putting out the, uh, the acronym out there. I'm actually going to copy this and let's see if I can get Richard, Richard, can you copy that connect acronym and throw it in the YouTube chat? So people watching on YouTube can have it as well. I want to make sure everybody gets that because it's super useful. It's something really handy to keep on hand, but the information that you just, like I was sitting here trying to find somewhere to take notes for myself of all the stuff that you were just saying is so great. So great. Um, we've got about 10 minutes left. So I do want to make sure you talk a little bit about what you offer if people are interested in learning more about Ascentive um, and the, the courses and stuff that you offer. So can you kind of just talk a little bit about what you offer, how people can get in touch with you, the best place to go? Best thing to do is connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, search Jamie Stewart, Ascentive. Um, I think I'm Jamie C. Stewart on LinkedIn is my profile. I'll put it in the chat in a minute. Um, so we use LinkedIn a lot, find it's great for business. It's changed over the last few years and, and it seems to be a brilliant platform now for people, not just for posting, but for interacting with people as well. Um, so we, we run our training, me and Dawn, there's two of us that teach it. So there's, you know, 
if the worst happens or one of us is on holiday, we've always got the other person that's there to train it. We we used to do it as, as a four-day course. So it would be a day and then two weeks later, another day, and it would last eight weeks for the four days. And the problem with, with that was taking a day out of your business is tough. And then you've got all the catch up to do. So now that one of the reasons that we moved it online is we spread it out into bite sized sections for people so that it's 90 minutes a week. We record all the sessions so you can watch them back in a private Facebook, private Facebook group. And it's the people that you're with as well. So, you know, like I said, we have a bit of a filter for our kind of people. Um, so the people that generally that are on the course, so Martin's a good example. He got two or three referrals from the other people that he sat the training with whilst he was doing the training. So, so it's a great way to get your return on investment because you spend 10 weeks teaching the other participants what it is that you do and how you work. Slightly harder, I guess, if you're in a different country to some other people, but still the same principles. And we've all got big networks nowadays. Um, so we run it, it's a 90 minute session each week and um, we make it fun. So we have um, we have a manual that we take people through so that you've got something tangible where you're taking your notes. And at the end of it, you end up with a strategy and a process for who you're going to work with. What does your ideal client look like? And what's the things that you need to do on a daily and weekly basis? So, for example, we all know that we need to be active on social media. We struggle with the what and the how to do it. And that's what we cover. So there's there's three key elements to to our program. Knowledge. So we give you the knowledge. We help you with the implementation and then the accountability as well. And I think Martin mentioned that. So, so Martin's gone on to work with me in a mastermind group as well to, to follow up on that. And so we, it's a 10 week program. We give you everything that you need in that. Some people like the accountability part. So coming back and working with other business owners as well, they get to bounce ideas off each other and um, pass introductions to each other as well. So it's price wise, we're pounds. So currently it's it's a thousand pounds to do the training plus tax. It's going up to 1250. So what that's going to be, I'm not sure what the dollar rate is right now. It's less than $2,000. For most people, if you think what's the value of a good client, one or two good introductions will cover the cost of that. Um, we had somebody the first came and did our training the other week. She she won a fourteen thousand pound order from the first week to the second week using some of our stuff. So it's not that you don't you don't come and wait until you finish the end of the ten week program before you used. We're pushing you each week, encouraging you each week to use the stuff and go out and implement it and we learn by doing so you, you wouldn't go and do a photography course for 10 weeks and never use a camera so it's the same with our material we, we get you using it each week and we're building habits and routines for people um and we celebrate success i've had one guy he sat this three years ago with somebody else it's been a tough year this year he, he runs an e-commerce agency he'd not sold anything for three months he'd been working on his existing projects that he'd won earlier on in in the year but he'd not sold anything for three months came back in september to work with me and november he's just had one hundred and fifty three thousand pounds worth of sales so it's different for different businesses it depends on the value of the products that you sell in but if you can get more of your dream clients then you don't need as many um, and it just takes that pressure off and you're working with the people that you want to work with, which is so, so important. I mean, yeah. obviously there's the money aspect, but what's more important is, are you truly happy and enjoying what you're doing? And you're not going to be, if you're working with the people that you don't want to work with, it, but they stopped, are bringing money. It stops being fun then, doesn't it? You know, we, we all want to enjoy when you, when you love what you do, it doesn't feel like work. And Absolutely. That, that's what we want. Absolutely. So with our audience being primarily photographers, what is some of the things the maybe some of the tips that you have specifically for photographers when, when it comes to referral marketing, um, anything like that, that you have maybe that's specifically for photographers or that you see that, that help photographers more? So Martin was in my networking group. So when we were in person and meeting in person, he would take pictures at the event every week. So if somebody was winning um, a certificate for something and they were up at the front, Martin would be straight up there with his camera to take a picture that would go out on social media. Everybody knew in the room that he was the photographer and he would get credited on social media for that. The two of us were quite good at visiting other networking groups. There would be, for me, I would see the photographers in those other groups who would sit in their seats. 
who wouldn't take their cameras. So you've, if you want it, just make yourself visible to people and, and be there. I'm not saying go and do everything for free, but you're at this networking event anyway. It's no effort to take your camera and get the shots. And, and even if it, a photographer taking a picture on your smartphone is going to be better than some builder doing it. So it might not be your best work, but it's for social media and it, and it works. Then when Martin first joined, one of the things that he did, um, there was a big training event on. He volunteered to go and take all the pictures there. There were six other photographers in the room that nobody noticed. He was the one that stood out, that was manoeuvring around the crowd and, and getting people to smile. Everybody got in touch with him afterwards because they wanted their smiley picture. So it was a great way for him to raise his profile. So I'm not saying do it all the time, be strategic with it. Pick some of the things that work for you to build some really good relationships and and. I think when you're starting out, you've got to build your reputation. So that's the thing. Pick some of the high profile people um, who are well connected and, and take their picture so that they become your advocates. I love that. I think so many times we are afraid to stand out. We're afraid to, to, to make ourselves known. Uh, my question is, did he do that wearing zebra skin shoes? Did he? I think <laughs> I think they might have been bright yellow. Actually. Bright yellow. <laughs> he's he's a shocking. Um, he, he makes an impact wherever he goes, and it, that, I think that's one of the things that that it's been hard over the last six to eight months. We can't be ourselves because when we're on Zoom, whilst one person's talking, everybody else is muted. You don't know what I'm wearing on my feet. Um, you, you can't have those little breakaway conversations. Yeah. So it's just been hard. Um, there's still work out there for people. I've noticed that a lot of things over here are starting to pick up again. Um, and you've just got to be visible, even if it's taking, I think the other thing as well is, and me and Martin were having this conversation this morning, photographers generally, if they're busy, they're not posting anything on social media because they're busy. You've got to keep doing it consistently. Um, the other thing I think I would say as well on that is, um, if someone, if, if I think that, if I'm a photographer and I think that you would be a great referral source to me, I should be WhatsApping you some of my best pictures and it showing you, because a lot of people don't know how to do this, how to create a folder in your photos um, app. So if it's an iPhone, you can have folders. A lot of people don't and they go, oh, hang on a minute. I've got some pictures from, uh, from Robert. Let me just find it. And they're there scrolling through. I'll find it in a minute. It's here somewhere. If they've got a folder of Martin's pictures or Robert's pictures and they're sat with somebody, go, look, this is what he does. Let me send them to you. So, so give your people the tools that they need to make it easy for them to make you look good. I love it. I mean, that's something we don't think about, right? I mean, we want people to do stuff for us make it as easy as possible for them to do that as well. You know, don't just expect them to figure it out on their own, but make it as easy as possible as well. We got like five minutes left, Jamie. Do you have any final thoughts you want to share with everybody? Anything at all that you want to maybe just put out there? One of the things that we do, we do a, a free masterclass for people. It's a, a 60 minute masterclass. If you connect with me on LinkedIn and drop me a message, then I'll send you a link to book. There's no charge for it. There's some great tips for people in there. Uh, how we cover off um, how to have good meetings with people. We've not touched on telephone tips. We have a great uh, thing for the telephone. And, you know, how many, Martin in particular, he, he'll be cringing right now and he knows exactly what I'm going to say. Martin hated picking up the phones, people. So this is, this is a good one. We encourage people to make how are you calls. We go into a little bit more detail about it, but it's just a call to touch base with people. Martin was like, no, 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 I don't, I just, I just don't like doing it. I'll, I'll email them. Can I, can I text them? No. So pushed him. He rang this client that he'd not heard from for six months. The reason he'd not heard from them, they'd left the company. So the person that normally booked him for the events wasn't there. So he got put through to the person who dealt with it now, came off the phone with a two and a half thousand pound booking just because he rang to check in on somebody. So don't be afraid to pick up the phone and just ask, you know, there's never been a year that's more important to ring people to say, I just, I've been thinking about you, Robert. I just thought I'd give you a call and see how you are. 
I can't say, I, I mean, I agree with that totally. I can't say that, I think that's like, that's like the perfect statement is right now more than ever, it is so important for us to show that human side, um, especially with our, with our clients and things like that is to be reaching out and just checking up on people and pushing yourself through the things that you uh, maybe are not the, not so excited to go and do. I know for me, like it was funny because you mentioned earlier, you know, most people are afraid of speaking in public, like public speaking, talking to people. The thing that I'm doing right now has always been the thing in my entire life that I've always hated doing the most. That I, but I've also always found that the greatest joy in it. So definitely pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, I think is, is great. Well, Jamie, we are out of time. I do want to say thank you so much for taking your time today and hang out with us. Some amazing, amazing stuff. I really appreciate it. Guys, if you're watching this, make sure that you go check out Jamie. If you're on YouTube, all of his information is below the video in the description. If you're hanging out on Zoom, I'm gonna grab Richard. Have Richard throw those links out for you guys in chat really quick. Don't forget you guys, no Zenfolio Live next week. We are gonna be taking a break until next year. So we will be back on the 7th of January. We are going to be doing Zenfolio Live the 7th of January and then January 6th. So right before Zenfolio Live on January 6th, we're going to be doing a Wide Angle Wednesday. If you're not registered for those, if you're watching on YouTube, the link to register for those is in the description below the video. Um, if you're watching on Zoom, maybe I'll give Richard a chance to throw those links out for you guys on Zoom. But again, Jamie, thank you so much. Really great information today. You're getting a lot of thank yous and a lot of people saying excellent, excellent uh, information Lynn says he will incorporate, and he said, you know how to do your pitch. I think that's what he said. Um, and he said, thank you so much for the steps that you listed. So a lot of great information. All right, you guys, uh, unfortunately, we are out of time. I do want to say thank you to everybody who hung out with us. Hey, make sure that you guys take this time this week, this weekend, maybe this is the rest of your life. Go do something good for somebody. Make sure that you encourage other people. Let's um, work together to make this world a better place because it could really, really use it right now. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I will see you guys all again in January. Thanks, Jamie. Have Thank a good you. one, Jamie. Bye-bye.